Welcome to CBB Review Courtside. My name is TJ O'Sullivan, a writer for CBB Review. This is season four, episode seven of the Courtside Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at CBB Review. Get all of your updates and everything from CBB Review. Check out our articles. We post daily. Um, and I've got a special guest for you today. Uh, we just witnessed Notre Dame last season. They finish 11 and 21, but the big storyline was coach Mike Bray steps down the all time winningest coach at Notre Dame and he steps down who better to hand the reins to than someone who knows a little bit about a rebuild project. And he was very good at it at his former school, Penn state. We've got head coach Micah Shrewsbury on the show. Coach Shrewsbury, thank you for taking the time. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, TJ. Thanks for having me on. So I'd mentioned in your intro, Penn State head coach last year, um, and uh, you started in 2021. You led Penn State to your first to their first tournament since 2011, and you got your first uh, tournament win uh, in the school's history since 2001. Walking into that Penn State job, knowing that that was somewhat of a rebuild as well, what was the mentality going in? You know, every, every coach I feel like has a set of goals. So what was your plan to help that program grow? You know, for us, um, we wanted to, to go in with a, like you said, a very specific plan and, you know, doing that thing, it, it, we had a couple of things that we wanted to do. We wanted to build something that could be sustainable uh, but also build it to have success right away. So we had an eye towards the present and an eye towards the future. And that was how we kind of mapped out our recruiting and how we were going to try and really flip that to, to have success as a basketball program. And you did have a lot of success, as I mentioned. Uh, you, the first tournament appearance since 2011, uh, first tournament win since 2001, got the job done in, in a very short amount of time, just two seasons uh, at the helm there. And now you are returning to uh, Indiana, which you have a lot of roots in Indiana. You uh, you played for uh, Hanover College. You got your first head coaching job uh, at Indiana University South Bend. Uh, you, were an in you were an assistant for an incredibly successful Butler team, which we'll get into a little bit about that later. Um, an assistant at Purdue, and now you're back in South Bend to coach Notre Dame. Um, what about Indiana is, is so, you know, what, where does that connect with you? You know, I, I, I would assume that you had your, your ear to the ground when you heard that Mike Bray was stepping down, you could return. So what, what is it? Are you excited to be back in Indiana? I'm definitely excited. Um, you know, throughout my coaching career, uh, I, I've spent, almost all of it in Indiana, right? I've only been outside of the state a few times. I had a couple of years at Marshall University and six years with the Boston Celtics and then those two years at Penn State. But every other part of that has been in, in, in Indiana and growing up here, playing high school basketball here, playing college basketball here in the state, um, the connections that I've been able to make with the basketball community throughout the state. Now, I've worked in almost every part of the state. And if I haven't worked there, I've probably lived there. So uh, the connections in this state are vast for us, which are going to help, especially on the recruiting trail and uh, building relationships, but also getting people fired up to, to come and watch us play. And hopefully it's a brand of basketball that makes the people of Indiana proud. And you mentioned the uh, recruiting trail. I'm going to skip ahead to that because I do want to talk about the recruiting trail. You've immediately made an impact with Notre Dame. Um, according to 24-7 Sports, you guys have the 11th ranked class in 2024. And I checked their records. According to them, that's the best class that Notre Dame has had this century. So, you know, what when you look at recruiting, what's the philosophy uh, for this team in particular? What were you looking to attack? What positions, uh, what markets, what are you looking for in a Notre Dame basketball player? I think, you know, first and foremost, my, my first thing that I look for is fit, right? Who, who is going to fit the University of Notre Dame? Uh, who is going to fit me as a basketball coach? Like guys that 
you know, you can come here and, and get a great education and have a lot of success when you leave here. Um, but I want guys to have that have huge aspirations. I want guys that want to play basketball for a really long time, that want to be professionals, that love the game, that want to be in the gym, um, because those guys fit me. Uh, but they also got to be able to handle themselves academically and and be a part of this Notre Dame community. So we look for guys like that. And when you we find that person, now it's about the basketball fit. And I'm big on skill. I'm big on guys being able to, to handle the ball, pass the ball, be able to shoot the ball, uh, but also some guys that display a level of toughness as well within that. So, you know, we did a good job of – of finding that and finding those guys. And, you know, that's always going to continue. And, uh, you know, we, I'm, I'm lucky because I have a staff of, of guys with me um, that love to recruit. Uh, we have a great product to sell here at Notre Dame. Um, and we all love basketball. So uh, we're going to find guys that are just like us. And you mentioned, uh, I'm actually going to bring up one of those guys um, that you recruited this year, uh, Marcus Burton, freshman point guard. I've been reading everywhere that this kid is athletic and this kid is fast. Uh, what have you seen from him so far in workouts? What are you excited for uh, what he brings to the table? Yeah, he, you know, coming with the pedigree of being Indiana's Mr. Basketball, which is really prestigious and, um, you know, throughout the years, you know, Notre Dame hasn't had a lot of those guys. Um, but when they have, those guys have had some success here. He is, Marcus is is really fast and really shifty. His ability to play fast, but also play under control, also be able to get through some small cracks that are that are open in the defense and, and get into the paint and cause havoc. He can score the ball at the basket. He can make pull-up jump shots. <clears throat> but he does a great job of finding his teammates as well. So um, we're excited. Like we're excited to have him, right? We're fortunate to have him and um, we're going to put a lot on his shoulders this year. And, you know, there's going to be ups and downs because he's a freshman and it's ups and downs with every freshman playing college basketball, but um, he's taken to those ups and downs. He's, you know, really embraced the coaching and embraced trying to get better. Um, so, I think you'll see him improve as the year goes on, and hopefully he's playing his best basketball at the end. And another freshman you're you're a little familiar with. Uh, there is uh, your son, Braden, uh, on the staff, another guy that I've been reading that is, uh, you know, going to have a huge role this season. And, you know, I won't, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to ask you about starting lineups and I'm not going to ask you about who's coming and who, whose minutes are getting what, but, you know, I, I want to switch sports for a second here because, you know, you know, you and your son, Braden, you know, you're getting to coach him at the collegiate level. The big story in football this year, right, is Coach Prime at Colorado coaching his sons. Uh, and he and Shadur have a moment every game where, you know, they walk up and down the the sideline and he says that that's the time that he's dad. Um, are you excited to have that sort of connection with with Braden at the college level? Yeah, I, I you know. I'm excited to coach him um, because he's a good basketball player. <laughs> like um, I, I've had a chance to watch him really work and turn himself into a good player. I, I think that's the been the joy for me as a dad um, <clears throat> that now I get the benefit from as a coach. Um, but yeah, those moments, like I, I took time, you know, before, before I really recruited him or, or talked to him about playing for me and talked to a lot of other dads who have coached their kids and got their experiences. And they really talk about how, you know, you get a chance to go through special moments kind of with your kid at the same time. And um, the one thing that, that, you know, you, he's earned his way with his teammates, right? That's probably the hardest thing for a coach's kid in the locker room is, you know, you got to earn the respect of your teammates and he's done that. Um, through hard work and just through being a, a good teammate and everything else. Um, but I know that those guys, there, there is no favoritism um, because he probably gets yelled at in practice more than anybody else. <laughs> As it is. 
Um, but I'm I'm really excited to see uh, uh, Marcus and, and Braden working together. I, I've heard a lot of good things about both, and I'm I'm excited to see what they do. Um, sort of switching gears here, going back to you know, brought up Mike Bray. Um, you know, that was a situation where that wasn't a, a messy breakup, right? Like he he steps down out of the position, wants to spend more time with his family. So have you had a chance to speak to him, you know, being the uh the the most winningest coach at Notre Dame, you know, did he have any advice for you? Has have you spoken to him? Yeah, like and it's <clears throat> you know, being here in South Bend for a couple of years, I had a chance to to be around him and come and watch practices and, and uh, when he was the coach here and I was at IU South Bend. Um, so I had developed a relationship with him and, and know him. And like you talk about one of the best people that you'll ever meet, right? Like that, that's the one thing I think if you ask anybody um, about Mike Bray, like the first thing they talk about is who he is as a person. And uh, he reached out to me really early on in the process and, and talked to me about, um, Notre Dame and and how much he loves this place and like how he could be helpful uh, if I wanted to, but he's, he's tried to stay away a little bit. I think he wants, you know, me to try and, you know, figure out things for myself, but he is available and accessible. That's the biggest thing is uh, he wants this place to have success, right? Cause he loved it. And he, what he did here was tremendous. Right. And that's, you know, it's hard for me to follow, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest coach, you know, all time winning as coach. Um, but, you know, it's an honor for me to follow him because now I want to like, you know, follow in those footsteps, do some of the things that he did and now, you know, try and take it a step further with this program. And another guy that you have a connection with um, in terms of, of other coaches is uh, Brad Stevens. Um, you were on his staff for uh your time at butler you were on his staff uh uh during uh his stint with the boston celtics uh very successful stint with the boston celtics i should say um what about working alongside him have you have you noticed you know because he's he's considered one of the great minds in or one of the great young minds in uh in this game so working alongside him like how did you how did you build each other up like what was the um what was some of the things that you noticed that maybe he brought to the table that you applied to your coaching, uh, your coaching philosophy. Yeah. I, I, you know, if you watch, you know, I've had a chance to spend a lot of time, you know, 10 years on staff with, with uh, Brad and like, I've just picked up so much. I think, you know, if you watch our teams play, we play very similar to how we played in Boston. Um, so stylistically and, and system wise, offensively and defensively, um, but really like spending that time around him, like how he treats his guys, right. How he treats everyone that's involved in the program. That's really big. And that's important. And, you know, with Brad, you felt like, like you wanted to run through a wall for him uh, because of the things that he was doing for you off the court or how he treated you on and off the court. And, um, you know, I try and emulate those as best as possible. And the one thing he always told me was you just have to be yourself. And, um, you know, that comes pretty natural being around somebody like him. Um, you know, I want to treat our guys the same exact way and uh, make it feel like, yeah, this is basketball, uh, but we're trying to help them in life and we're trying to help them grow as young men while they're here. Um, so letting them know that we're always here for them, that we'll do anything for them. Um, and you kind of take those traits from some of those guys that, that I worked for. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, that is an awesome way to, you know, coach a team, you know, be be that role model, you know, as, as well as drawing up the X's and O's. Um, so now, you know, we've gotten a chance to get to know you, get to know where you come from. Our listeners know you a little bit better. Now let's talk about the season ahead. Let's talk about, you know, you're playing in the uh, the ACC this year. This is the first time you've had an ACC coaching job. What you know, it, it's it's such a rich conference in terms of history. You know, you've got your Dukes and your uh, your North Carolinas. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you're excited for 
coaching in the uh, the ACC? And what are some, if any, what are some challenges that you think uh, you guys might face uh, off the bat? Yeah, I, I'm excited. Um, you know, I've never coached in the ACC, so getting the chance to go to some of these places, uh, play against some of these teams, right? You know, like, like, I've never been to Duke. I've uh, been on campus, but I've never played a game inside of there. We played a preseason game at North Carolina when I was with the Celtics, um, but going and playing there and, and a lot of these, you know, different places will be a cool experience, right? Like you hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure like they're not trying to make it a cool experience for us, but. No, not a, a chance. Never, no. <laughs> yeah. And then getting a chance to compete against, you know, some great basketball coaches, right? Like guys that I've grown up respecting in, in college basketball, and whether that's coach Larinaga or whether that's, um, Leonard Hamilton or, or a guy like Steve Forbes, like, um, you know, I'm Mike Young. I'm a huge fan of his. Like, there's some great coaches in this league and uh, just having a chance to go up against those guys on, on a nightly basis and compete. Like, you know, the challenge is for us, obviously, we're a young team in college basketball. You, you want to be old. You want to be an older team. And I think there are some of those in the ACC um, so our challenges will be competing against those guys on a nightly basis when you got to be at your best um, to have success in this conference. Can we do it as a young team night in and night out? And, you know, we're kind of working towards that right now. And let's talk about, you know, you, you just said working towards it. What is really showing out to you and it could be a person it could be a player it could be you know something that's really meshing well with the team like what's standing out to you in these preseason workouts I think for us right now and and um, I talk to our guys all the time and I talk about like you know I don't coach effort um, you know we just expect effort and I haven't had to get on these guys at all about playing hard and, and that's one thing. And, you know, we're going to hang our hat on the defensive end of the floor. Um, but we're also going to, like, we're going to play extremely hard every night out. And, you know, having guys that do that without having to coach it is something that's special. And, uh, you know, if you do that, if, you're, if we're disciplined defensively, if we play the way we're supposed to, keep people out of transition, like, we'll give ourselves a chance every single night. Um, if we stick to those details and principles, um, but playing hard is going to give us a chance. And, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to coach that and we don't have to talk about it much because these guys are doing it. Well, coach, I could ask you questions all day because as I said, I've got family ties to Notre Dame. So this is a very, my family's freaking out that I'm talking to you right now. So, uh, definitely, um, I, I could talk to you all day, but I just have one more question for you. Don't want to take up too much of your time. There is, you know, every every coach, every player, I feel like goes into a season thinking our goal is the national championship, right? Um, and you know, because if you're if you're not, you're doing it wrong, right? So what? But what is you know th that's the ceiling for everybody. What do you want to see out of Notre Dame this season? That you know, coming off of a season where they they may have struggled last season before you got there. What do you want to see in terms of growth, in terms of, of, of anything? What do you want to see out of the squad this year to yeah. consider it a successful season? You know, I don't, I don't know how to, how to judge a season for us. And, and I'm not going to – I don't want to put a cap on our team either and say, hey, let's try and win X amount of games, right? And then we get to that number, and now we're, like, satisfied with that, right? So, like, we are – like we want to really narrow our focus to a couple of small things that we try and do every single day. And we talk about every day is when I walk into practice, when I walk into a game, all I'm thinking about is having a team first attitude and improving every single day and trying to get better. Right. If, if we're doing that, if you're coming in with that attitude, our team is getting better as you get in better, as you get better individually. So that's all we're focused on, right? I'm not talking about like wins, losses. Um, you know, we, we have a game on November the 6th is our opening game. And I'm so far from thinking about that. All I'm thinking about is today's practice. And I'm thinking about us, you know, improving as a team and getting better every single day. That'll help us, you know, build the details and the focus that we need 
to have success as a program. Well, Coach, I wish you the best of luck this season. I'm hoping to get out to Purcell to cover one of your games this year. So I wish you the best of luck uh, one month away, as you mentioned, to the start of the season. So we're getting close. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And that is the CBB season episode, season four, episode seven, excuse me. Uh, follow us on X, as I mentioned, at CBB Review. Uh, we'll catch you next time.